Hey everybody, this is Caleb Leverett, and I'm in an undisclosed location in Odessa, Texas. I'm making my rounds like I normally do, traveling from Florida to Georgia to Louisiana to Texas. Made it to New Mexico, went and saw my mom and dad, and we spent about a week together in uh, Rudos, New Mexico. And I'm just having the time of my life. But uh, today I want to talk to you about jealousy. In my opinion, jealousy is probably the most disgusting uh, human trait that any human being could ever have. And I've had, it, unfortunately, more than my fair share of having to deal with jealous people. I can't figure out why anybody would be jealous of me. I'm broke. Um, I've had my life turned completely upside down. I had my children stolen from me by their own mother and sent dad, Jason May, and moved five and a half hours away. I've had my bank account seized twice. I was jailed for 60 days. I became a severe alcoholic, uh, 50 pounds plus overweight. And uh, all this to say is um, I am still broke, but I've got some really good things in the works. I'm not destitute, but I am broke. That's the price you pay in this uh, family court environment. If you are a man and you want to see your children and your ex is hell bent on making sure that you are alienated. First, I wanna say how thankful and grateful I am to the millions and millions and millions of you who have watched the Parker series, who have watched the Blaine series, and then the dozens of maybe hundreds of you here lately who've supported me and watched me now that all that mess is over. I am so thankful for the support that I have had. Um, but to the jealousy part, I have had some successes and I've obviously had some terrible, terrible failures. And I take the blame for making the wrong decision, the wrong choice in a mate 26 years ago. I didn't know what I was doing. I, take, I accept responsibility for that. Um, with the Parker movie, 14-year-old uh, Parker stands up for his rights. Last time I checked, it was at about 47 million views just on my channel alone, not to mention everyone else that's put it up on their channel. But with that success also came the haters. Now, the thing about haters is it, it's, when you're, it's like when you're arguing with somebody, and forgive me, but particularly a woman, that's just, you know, something that I've had quite a bit of experience with. I think it's jealous. Of course, when you say it's jealousy, when you're in a debate with them or an argument with them, of course, it's not what I say. It's If I say it's jealousy, oh, I'm not jealousy. If I say you're mad, oh, I'm not mad. Okay, well, whatever it is you want to call it, I'm just going to make it real simple and call it jealousy. I had obviously some success 10 years ago with the Parker movie. But you gotta remember, we had already been divorced for like six years. After being miserably married for 10 years. And uh, I fortunate, finally for, and fortunately got to expose the antics of my kid's mother and uh, simp dad, Jason May. Which again, I'm eternally thankful for. Fast forward several years, 2017. Oh yeah, hang on. The jealousy and the hatred and the, the claws really, really came out. That video is so big. And of course, there are plenty of people who have thanked me and admired me and, and given really, really kind words to me. And I am forever thankful for that. The point of this video is to I'm sharing my knowledge, what I've learned, so that you, in your life, particularly the young people who watch this, and you will have some successes in your life, 
And I'm telling you right now, don't let the haters detract you. They are strictly, they're detractors. They, they're trolls. Their jealousy gets the best of them. Fast forward several years, 2017. My own best friend at the time stabbed me in the back a week or two before we went to court. And it's, in my opinion, over jealousy. And uh, that little twit in his beady eyes actually had the nerve to show up in court anyways. And I won custody of my son. And uh, I had made some comments where, uh, of my success and I was happy that I was gaining, finally gaining some success before, right before it happened. Uh, as many of you know, I am a YouTube partner. It's 2023, pretty much everyone's aware that you can make money on YouTube. And I've had every kind of insult, every kind of accusation, selling out my kids, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, I've got other videos for you. If you care to watch, I've talked about that. But um, anyway, my own best friend stabbed me in the back uh, in 2017. Now, fast forward to just three years ago, yours truly come, this is August, this has been three years, August 21st will be three years that I am 100% recovered from alcoholism. I am no longer an alcoholic. And I know that those words or stating it like that triggers people and in this divisive world in which we live, I hear this all the time. Once you're an alcoholic, Caleb, you're always an alcoholic. Well, as a former alcoholic and somebody who has picked themselves up by their own bootstraps and, and, and thrived after it, I'm here to tell you, y'all are wrong. You're just simply wrong. You don't may not know it. You may not want to admit it, but you're, you're wrong. I'm not an alcoholic any longer. To me, that is the worst thing you can put a label like that on a uh, somebody who is an addict, is tell them you're an addict and you will always be an addict. And there's nothing you can do except daily say, I won't have a drink today. That's fine and dandy, but <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, if you've been through divorce, have been through a divorce, or uh, it's particularly that involved children, and or they're depressed and you're fighting substance abuse um there's going to be a link in the description where you can talk to me if you would like because this is a new business that i am starting where you can see my schedule and click on the link and for 85 bucks an hour you can talk to me and pick my brain um anyway back to the jealousy part three years ago when i quit drinking I was under the impression that uh, <laughs> if I just quit drinking, a month or two will go by and all that weight will fall off. And that's simply not true. So in December of 2021, my youngest son, Blaine, came to live with me in Florida in my little, tiny, junky little sailboat. The sailboat in and of itself, I got hate from people from that. I got haters attacking me because I abandoned my children and left Texas. There's nothing left in here in Texas for me, and there hasn't been for a very, very long time. Um, <clears throat> Blaney Boo came to live with me, and in December of 2021, my son Blaine, who is a bodybuilder, taught me how to lift properly with proper form. He taught me what macros were. Blaine taught me the importance of protein and the importance of water. And weirdly enough, he was 18 at the time, taught me how destructive alcohol is and why you never see people that jog and run and lift weights and do these amazing things that these these athletes can do none of them drink and uh, by the way just on a side note Dwayne the Rock Johnson <laughs> come on man do you really have to drink a shot of your whatever booze you're 
pushing every time you do some kind of video. Um, if you get a chance and you're curious, go watch Dwayne Johnson. He's, I want to say he's 10 years older than me. He's at least 50, 55, 56, maybe 57. And you don't look like that and drink lots of alcohol. Unless you were in kind, some kind of other drugs, shooting up or anything. <clears throat> Which is, brings me to my next point. I have been diligently since December of 2021, almost without missing a day. I've taken off a week. I think I've taken off up to two weeks. But other than random here and there, I haven't taken a day off from lifting. And Blaine, my own son, I got to learn how to lift from him. And I am forever thankful that he showed me and took the time to show me how to do it. That being said, I am the one who did the work for me, which is why I look like this. Now, people have told me ever since I quit drinking, Caleb has fallen off the wagon again, or Caleb's on steroids now. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not. I'll take cannabis in various forms occasionally, I'm open about taking psychedelics occasionally, but in my process of learning who I am, I've learned that I don't even need cannabis for sleep anymore. I don't need uh, psychedelics even anymore. I've done mostly LSD, but a few mushrooms, not very much. And now that I've, I've done it, I, it opened my eyes and uh, I'm quite happy and satisfied with the body that I have now. 100% drug free, no TRT, no steroids of any kind. I don't even take creatine. Occasionally I'll have, I do like uh, protein powders, whey protein, simple off the right off the shelf, whey protein. But um, now, uh, the jealous assholes are attacking me because I'm having success looking like a Greek god. I'm not bragging about it, but I'm bragging about it. I'm not trying to be pompous about it, but the assholes who come after me, you're, if, if you really want to take me on, you're going to, I'm, I bite back. And I encourage everybody, as you go through life, you are going to have the people you least expect. Sometimes it's your own friends. Sometimes it's your own parents. Sometimes it's your own sibling. You're gonna find people that have this nasty, nasty, nasty characteristic in, their, in a human being called jealousy. And again, to me, in my opinion, is the absolute worst character trait that a human being could have is jealousy because it makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do. One, if you find yourself becoming jealous, one exercise that I've learned over the years that I have used myself is go to envy because there's a big difference between jealousy and envious. Jealousy is wanting what someone else has and being mad that they have it and you don't. Envious means you would just really like to have that, that type of lifestyle, that type of success, but you're also happy that they have it and you're okay that you don't. It just means you got to work harder. When my friends and acquaintances and just any, any random person on the internet that, that I don't, don't even know, when they post success, God damn, I'm happy for them. I've got friends who are multi, multi millionaires right now. People I went to school with, people I've met on, I've, I've met, I don't have a lot of friends anymore, really, because I'm such a hermit, but I do have a lot of acquaintances. I know a lot of people and I watch them post online or even in person, uh, their successes. And I find myself rooting for them, happy for them. When, like when my own kids, they've had their own successes. I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they didn't take the, the life choice path that I took. I'm happy. They've got their problems, of course. 
but I'm happy that, that they're being they're successful. When my friends make a big sale, get a big promotion. Um, I'm on Facebook a lot. I know, I know, I know. But uh, I've got you know, thousands of people that I interact with, just like everybody else on Facebook. That I don't, a lot of them I don't ever hear from. But I, I, I can't help but people that I never hear from when they post somebody, even if they're big and fat like I was. And yes, I do make fun. I do tease fat people, but it's not for the reason of getting my rocks off on on uh, teasing or bullying. It's to encourage you because if you haven't noticed, this world's kind of fucked up right now. Like men think they're women and women think they're men. And then you've got the cis and the pans and the God almighty, whatever else they're going to come up with next. So anyways, when I see people that I don't really even know that just kind of follow me, uh, became Facebook friends, whether well, they post something, I encourage them. God dang, I'm happy for them. Go, go, go. You go, girl. You go, man. Put that bottle down. Get off Get off that fucking couch. Do some jogging. If you want, like, if you want a body like this, there's only one way. Heavyweights daily. Water, a gallon. I drink a gallon of water every single day. First thing I do when I wake up, 32 ounce room temperature water. That is after I pee. That's the very first thing I do sunlight you must have sunlight if you're not getting sunlight you're going to cause problems and then high protein diets some people say you can get it from being a uh, vegan i've tried vegan diet and it just it, that's bullshit it's pure 100 percent unadulterated bullshit but if that works for you by all means go ahead but it never fail I, I've never met a vegan that could sustain it for year after year after year without seeing obvious physical uh, problems. Hair loss prematurely, skin messed up, uh, all kinds of uh, digestive problems. Because you can get by with it. I got by with it for about, about 10 months. I tried the vegan diet because I just wanted to see it for myself. I obviously like you, I'd heard everything about um, all the jokes about the vegans, but anyways, I'm getting a little off topic, but my point is, if you find yourself a jealous person, you really ought to work on that because you're going to lose people. And then if you hang around people and are friends with or even related to uh, jealous people, I encourage you to get away from those people. If they won't change, you have to change. Because the, those type of people, those negative Nancys, they will, they will bring you down. Don't listen to the haters. Be positive. Um, one thing I use a lot is sarcasm. I joke a lot. Um, I'm still fighting some demons. I've still got some, some battles that I'm... I'm still angry and it's no secret. I am still very, 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 very angry at my kid's mother and sent dad for what they did to my children and me. And I'm working on that and this is how I do it. I've come to realize that I've basically got a very addictive personality. If I'm gonna, I'm gonna be addicted to something and now I'm addicted to lifting weights and getting my body looking like the way it looks. And I'm okay with that. If, if that's my life, I'm 46, I'm well over halfway uh, to the grave, statistically speaking. But um, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm just, I'm addicted to weightlifting, I, I guess, I suppose. I don't know how to prove or disprove that, but if it could be proven, and in fact, it, it is shown that I am addicted to weightlifting, okay, I'm fine with that. I'll accept it. That's good. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good, to, I'm good being able to run. Like three years ago when I quit drinking, I couldn't even run. I did this weird hobble because it, I just couldn't. I physically could not do it. It wasn't the weight. It was it hurt. Everything hurt. But it's taken diligence and every single day doing what a man has got 
to do. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, and take care of your soul. Speaking of, I'm, I'm already kind of going off on some tears here, so I'll just go off on this just a little bit. It's no big secret that when Parker was taken from me on that hot ass August afternoon um, back in 2013 in the parking lot of the Ector County Courthouse was the absolute worst day of my life. The way I saw it, I was surrounded by judges and cops and lawyers that were all Christians and they all stole my son and jailed him. That's how I saw it. Whether that's real or not, that was my perception. And I abandoned what Christian God that I was raised in. And I'd, I've stayed agnostic ever since. That being said, I have come to realize this is just my own personal journey. I'm not pushing my religion on any of you. I would appreciate you stop pushing your religion on everybody else because that's how people get sucked into this shit. Um, I've come to realize that to me, there is some kind of energy that made all of the matter and the time and the space that we all occupy that is beyond human comprehension. Um, I've started meditating and I, as silly as this may sound, I really don't care, but I talk to the energy. I meditate, I give thanks and I give praise and I ask this energy. I, I just, maybe it is a God. That's what we call, that's what we label it as. Maybe it's a God, maybe it's an energy. I don't know any more than you do what's on the afterlife. I, I really don't know, but I've, I've felt this calling on my heart to be just a little more humble and realize that there is something out there that I can't explain. I suppose I'll go to my grave not knowing what it is while persistently pursuing, looking for this truth. Where did we come from? What's on the other side? I don't know. Nobody does. It's never been proven. And cool your jets if you're get if that makes you angry. We and you go point to books and say, look, it says right here. Those are just books. Yes, they are probably inspired by divine things that people can't explain. I'm totally open to that. I'm not saying Jesus didn't exist. Maybe he did. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. So, uh, anyway, I, I don't want to get too much into that. But for the people who have worried about my soul uh, after realizing that I abandoned Christianity, um, I'm okay. No, don't, don't fear. I, I'm okay. I'm okay with whatever happens to me afterwards. I just simply, after dealing with humans my entire life, and seeing just how vile and evil people can be by what they did to my kids, ripped them away from me. Um, arrest had Blaine's own mother, had him arrested. I don't know, like a half, six or eight times in a two week period, locked up in Nick's hospital twice for a week, strapped to a gurney, force fed drugs that I can't say because I'll get demonetized. But that, again, that's just the world in which we live. But uh, anyway, I'm getting a little off topic here, um, as I normally do. But um, my point is, when you find your peace, hold on to it and grow your peace. Grow your body. Grow your mind. Fix your, your soul. And... Um, when the inevitable haters come your way and try to make you feel terrible for having some kind of success, and I don't care who it is, even if it's your own parents or your brother, sister, best friend, do not let anybody take away your own uh, joy from something that you worked really, really hard for because you've earned it and it's okay. Just know that 
especially younger people. When I was young, I was really, really, really naive. Really naive. And I took it personally when it hurt so bad. I couldn't understand why you're my friend or you're my whatever. You know, why would you do that to me? Why would you, why would you say that to me? Why? I, I couldn't believe it. And it, it still bugs me a little bit, but I've reached the point in my life now where if you're going to come at me, I will drop you like a bad habit because I've gotten really good at dropping bad habits. Y'all take care. Um, consider not hitting your cheerings. Thank you.